So, hi, I'm Janine from Cargo. I've been at Cargo for about a month and a half. And I will tell you, I'm, I, I am so happy to be at Cargo because this whole conference at NRF is about tech. And I'm so thrilled to be at an ad tech company. So I just have to say that right now. And I'm with my new BFF, my new friend, Amy Spiridakis. And she is the vice president of category marketing at Target. And she came in July of 19. And her career prior to that was at Pepsi. And I want to ask her a couple questions about her steamed career and how she zigged and zagged. And, and it's all coming together. And I will say that she was recruited by her former boss, so that says something about her. So she might not brag about herself. And there he is, right there. Uh, good, good taste. So Amy, tell us about yourself and Target, and you know how you got there. Yeah. Well, Janine, it's so fun to spend time with you. We and, love each other. Um, really funny because it also is reminding me that my LinkedIn is slightly outdated. But. Um, yeah. You know, I feel, and I'm super fortunate because I'm looking at all my Target friends who are here today. Um, you know, it's fun to be back in New York. I joined Target three and a half years ago as um, a category before marketing leader, right before the pandemic. So um, that was an interesting move. But um, I really began most of my marketing career with PepsiCo. So um, coming out of college, I knew I wanted to do business, and my, my parents had given me the ultimatum that they would help me with my education, but my dad was like, the day you graduate, you have a job. So I actually studied hotel administration um, here in New York at Cornell University, and I picked that because I loved working with people. I loved that there was an analytical side, but then there also was um, a creative side of how do you delight people and create an experience that is really memorable. So long story short, spent a few years in that industry, and the more time I spent there, I realized that what I really loved was studying how people think and what would make you choose that vacation over another vacation. And I realized that um, really going back to business school and studying more formal training. In Minneapolis, training. right? Yes, So it's like coming to Target, it's like coming home. Yeah, I'm a bit of a boomerang and a couple of friends. So um, I, went, I moved, um, I had family ties in Minneapolis. I went to the University of Minnesota. And oh. um, yes, a golden gopher maybe. <laughs> Um, so I, I went there and boomeranged back to the Northeast to join PepsiCo and was really blessed to spend 14 years there in a couple of different, mar well, many different marketing positions. And they I never let you get bored. That's what they I heard. They definitely did not. And a couple of my PepsiCo friends are here today too. But so amazing experiences there. And I think, you know, many of you how, um, who are in the CPG space, you know this of just moving from you know, brand marketing, where you're learning about building equity, to then innovation marketing, to how do you really then extend a brand into adjacent areas, and then also commercial marketing, where um, I worked not only on the food service side, so again with restaurants and hotels, but then over to the retail side. And, um, you know, lived in New York for 14 years, loved it, and <laughs> ironically, uh, a mentor and leader I had worked for um, at PepsiCo was at Target leading their marketing department. He's here today. <laughs> and he gave a great panel earlier, <laughs> yes, too. He did. I said, I will not be as polished as, as he was. But, you know, I think, um, Janine, long story short of finding my way to Target was exciting for me on a couple fronts because... From a career perspective, I love studying the consumer. Um, I also love that continuous learning. And organizations like PepsiCo, certainly like Target, really, really give great opportunities to continue to grow as a professional and as, as a leader. So um, it's certainly an honor to work with colleagues that I've enjoyed working for in the past and then new colleagues as well. Well, I think it's the ultimate compliment to be recruited by your former boss, well, we'll uh, Rick. <laughs> you know, and so it says a lot about you and your star. Um, I, here's what I'll say. Okay, you go start July 2019. Boom! COVID, talk about what you learned. How, what, what do you think about what you've learned? And since you're a perpetual learner, what have you learned about retail and the consumer and products, you know, pre and post COVID? 
Well, I, I feel super lucky because having, you know, I started July 2019, and ironically, um, the last day in the office was March 13th, 2020, which March 13th was my birthday, and I remember, you know, oh, colleagues in the office that being was like, Friday the 13th. it was Friday the 13th, right, which lucky. we all probably all look back on. I, I was really lucky to get seven months working, you know, in the office, getting to meet all different um, people across Target. I got to spend some time in stores and travel with different teams. And, um, you know, the culture at Target is really, really all about the people and our values of care grow and win together. And I you think- call the people get, your consumers guess, which I yes, love. Yes, yes. I love that. Which has a ton of meaning of I'm how do you provide- I'm a guest Target a lot. Good, keep coming. Yeah, I can't seem to get out of there without too. spending $300. I don't know what, like, no matter what I'm going for, it's $300, $300, I'm like, <laughs> Three hundred dollars, you know. <laughs> we say thank you, um, but I think you know, having those time together, and I think over the past three years, as we've all worked differently, I feel fortunate to have had that foundation. And certainly now, as new folks have joined, um, even change changing roles, and I'll speak to that. I've changed roles at Target in yeah, the past. Yeah, they never six let months. you get bored, right? You're doing food and beverage now, yeah, right? Yeah, so now um, over the past six months, and this is where members of the team who are here from the food and beverage team at Target, um, I had the opportunity to join the food and beverage team leading strategy and operations. Amazing. And certainly, you know, using different parts of my brain, getting to meet different people across the organization. And, you know, I think for all of you who are here with marketing backgrounds, I think as students of the consumer or students of the guests, as we talk about it, right, you have that foundation and the capability to grow and stretch in different ways. So That's I'm grateful awesome. and I'm thankful I started pre-March 2020 <laughs> for many reasons, but it also gives you empathy for when new people are joining teams. How can you help them? Because we are working differently than we were four years 100%. ago. 100%. I mean, it's a learning time for all of us, right? Because the consumer has changed. The consumer has changed their behavior. And you've done some amazing innovation in this since post-COVID. Like, you know, tell us a little bit about what you're doing in food and bread. And I was hearing about those cool meal kits. I got to go. Got to get one. <laughs> part of my $300. Well, I'm, th I'm sure there'll be a new part of it. And certainly there's members of the team um, here that are very close to that work. Um, you know, Tar and I, actually it was one of the projects when I joined on the marketing side, Target was launching a new flagship food and beverage brand called Good & Gather. Now, three and a half years later, it's a $3 billion wow. business that, and wait, the leader sitting wait, wait, in the wait, front wait, wait. row. Three billion? Yes, three Do, billion dollars. Can we dollars. say that again? Three right. billion? That's a lot of money. Across so many different categories, and it really, Target is building brands, you know, not just labels, brands that Amazing. can really delight guests Great. with affordable joy, with convenience. So um, definitely your next time at Target when you're looking for something different for your for your dinner or for your even to serve for your families for lunch, there's over and there's thousands of options within Good and Gather to really help you there. And so I, now I'm spending three hundred and fifteen dollars <laughs> because they what is that what I heard? Like they they retail for that. Oh my God. So. Well, and Janine's referencing meal kits that were, um, Rick spoke about at the NRF panel earlier, which just putting different combination of Good and Gather products together in a bag, right, on an end cap. So then when you're looking, and we know that we all do this, looking for what are you going to serve for dinner that night, it's conveniently there with family favorite recipes that taste great and are really, really affordable. So in this digital world, you know, Target's always been about brand. I mean, everybody knows Target. You know, the brand is so strong. But how do you, how does content drive to commerce? I mean, we at Cargo really care about that because we know that the consumers really are getting a lot of their information in a different way than they ever have before. So tell me about how content drives to commerce. Yeah, and um, there's a, we've been, obviously there's a rich history around Target and inspiration. And certainly at the NRF show this week, if you've walked the, the yeah. trade floors, it's, it's crazy. Janine and I were saying it feels like a technology show, yes. right? Ad tech. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> with cargo. Um, 
what, what we think about is how do we really compress the moment from inspiration to conversion. And when I was still on the marketing side at the beginning of, of 2022, we tried to look at where are those media channels, media partners that consumers go for inspiration. Of course, cargo. Of course, which we do work together and really trying to compress that journey. So Makes at sense. the moment of inspiration and, and certainly whether it's through influencers or partners and affiliates, how do you really then allow it to be really easy of like, I love that, I wanna buy that. Love that. And, and, uh, and it's making it easier for the consumer, right? Right, so you know everything from all the, the digital tech and ad platform folks who are looking to make sure that you don't have to put your target profile in multiple times, and so how can we really help make it easy and enjoyable for you? That's great. Well, I, you know, I, I'm sure it's gonna turn to $400 soon <laughs> next time I go. Um, so now I know that Target made a big shift. You, went, you took all your agency creative in-house and tell me about that move and the significance of that. You know, since we were talking about content and creative, like you're now, it's all there. It's all right next to you. Yeah, well, certainly Target works with a mix of external agency partners as well as our the in-house team. And I was telling Janine as I was talking about transition from CPG world over to Target, that certainly was something new to get used to. And um, certainly my prior employer had a large design group, but. Um, we are blessed at Target to have a large in-house creative team, and there's so many benefits of that in terms of the institutional knowledge of really great, talented, creative people that know the brand really well. They also have the history of when things were really effective and maybe sometimes when they could have been even better. Um, so that has been just really great to experience working with creative partners who are not only knowledgeable about the guest, they're knowledgeable about the brand, and then they have the history. So certainly um, so many so many benefits of that. Um, I think there's also, can be at times, challenges of um, certainly, you know, throughout the pandemic when different types of work stalled with the obvious being experiential. And so it's really fun to see now all different parts of marketing back up and live again That's great. to really great, help grow the brand. That's awesome. And then how are you measuring success? I mean, you know, a lot of this conference people have been talking about data analytics and, you know, but that's not everything, it's directional. So how are you measuring success at Target? Well, certainly, and um, we had a fun round table discussion a little bit earlier, certainly um, I think a lot of the same metrics that are used consistently by this group Obviously, return on ad spend is one that is either loved or maybe <laughs> not so loved. But also looking at what are the short-term and the long-term metrics to look at are you growing the brand and is equity growing, right? Are you deepening your relationship with your guests, which is closely tied there? And, you know, I think one of, one of the metrics we were talking about earlier it's a bit evasive is what is, what is that long-term or lifetime value that you have with a guest and seeing, you know, are they staying with your brand? Why or why not? And certainly, um, you know, just trying to look at it holistically, but balance with the short term as well as the long term. Yeah, and there's a lot of personalization going on right now because different consumers react to different things. So, I mean, how are you, how are you, you know, measuring all of that since, you know, uh, people are not the same? For sure, and um, you know, I think it's been awesome that Target's been on a journey and really evolving its approach to segmentation. And you know, we're blessed to have no shortage of data, but really honing in on how it, how is our brand performing and how are our guests engaging with all aspects of the Target experience. And so, certainly, understanding is someone taking as many trips with us today as they did a year ago. How are the products that they're buying, are they expanding their portfolio of what they buy with Target or contracting? So really looking at their engagement overall and you know, hopefully continuing to win their loyalty and, and their share of wallet with our business. That's great. Can you give an example of when you had to be nimble, when you noticed something wasn't going totally right but that you p had to pivot quickly? Because I, I think those, you know, I think somebody said it earlier, we all have to learn from our, our 
fail fast, learn from our mistakes quickly. So give, give us an ex example of that. Yeah, and my friends um, from Target here, this is a, a when Janine asked me about this, the first thing that popped into my head was um, the work that the team does around holiday. And specifically, there were a couple, I mean, this year, you know, we all have felt the pressures to be nimble. And, um, you know, for, for the food and beverage business, certainly Thanksgiving is the biggest food holiday there is in the U.S. each year. And A, we were seeing consumers shop differently for holiday. We started seeing competitors talk differently about their proposition. And we realized, you know, probably, you know, st uh, with less lead time than anyone would ideally want to have, that we wanted to make sure that we had a really strong value message that also highlighted the great Good and Gather and other offerings that we have. And so the team really scrambled, I'll be honest with you, early in November to say, what is going to be that message that reinforces all the investments we've made in pricing and the guest experience. And so um, thanks to our good partners on our communications and PR team, the team worked together on a Thanksgiving message, Thanksgiving for five for under $25. And um, that's a great message, I have to say. That's a a great, great value message, really um, reinforced by the different innovation of the different kinds of Good and gather offerings, whether it be green beans or potatoes or pies, to to really complete your meal. And um, you know they pitched it a couple weeks out. It drove a ton of traffic to Target.com, and it was one of the highest performing. That's great outreaches that we've done. And so you know, in we're constantly thinking about okay, now let's make sure we're more on our front foot versus our back. But it really was a great example of moving quickly as a cross-functional team in a very short and you amount said of that time. You started this at the beginning of November. Well, we had detailed, you know, what is our, our pricing strategy, but seeing lots of conversations about consumers and, and really about the meal specifically, not you know necessarily about their holiday shopping and people, you know, making trends of. People are going to bring additional sides instead of being able to, you know, the host to extend it. So that convergence of listening to what's going on externally, what are we hearing guests saying, that really caused the cross-functional team to come together and say, okay, what are we going to say this November um, that helps drive traffic to Target That's for our great. food offerings? Re really taking advantage of information in real time. I love it. That's great. Um, I'm going to celebrate my Thanksgiving with you guys <laughs> next year. Um, I love it. So now, you know, we all talk about it. I know that you and I have talked about this because purpose and uh, equality and using our positions in the workforce to bring people together uh, has always been important to us. But in this day and age, consumers really care about purpose, and they want to know what a company's values are. So can you talk a little bit about Target's efforts around DEIB and everything that you stand for, the values of the company, and how you're you're translating that for consumers or for, guests. For sure, and I think that's one of the things that makes Target Target of really being anchored in the culture. And I'll tell you, as someone, I still say I feel relatively new to Target, only having been there three and a half years. Of the how the work is done is as important as what. The results are. 100%. And I think, you know, as um, a team member and as an employee, that really sets the tone if in, in your meetings and in your discussions you start with the how. And Target's values, as I mentioned before, the pillars of the culture are care, grow, and win together. And Wait, wait, let's say that again. Care, <laughs> grow, and win together. I love that. That's like so simple. We should all, we all should, it's like, you know, the golden rule, right? Well, and, and I, um, again, I feel very fortunate that I see it come to life consistently. And, you know, I think by starting with the how, right, and making sure that we're showing the care for the team as well as for the guest, hopefully then it extends to the experience that you all have as guests of Target, that you see that care go through. Certainly um, is complemented by the um, appetite and the drive for growth, 
but it's really balanced in this idea of winning together. And I think that idea of team um, is really, really clear that it's not one person's efforts, it's the efforts of the team and the group to deliver it. Well, I mean, Target Hose always walk the walk and talk the talk, right? Like you support diverse suppliers, you, you know, you make sure that there's inclusion, your ads have always been, you know, showcasing authentic portrayal of many groups. Uh, you know, I, I've always been impressed by that. And so it's, it's great to see a culture that's so committed to inclusion. And that was another thing that actually stood out to me when I joined Target was that um, anyone I talked to, whether it be marketing or supply chain or on the own brand design team, they could all recite the company's purpose of That's helping great. all families discover the like joys the of, of every day. It I was love exactly it. like I that. Love it. And so I think that again carries through through the culture and then the commitments. I know you asked about DE and I of Target has made very outward commitments at giving back to communities, growing our business with diverse owned brands and and you know, that is a constant through line as well as we look to how do we drive growth. It's to really help deliver for all those families that look very differently, right, across this country. 100%. I mean, I have made a professional and personal commitment to making sure that general market and multicultural markets become one because I think that's our obligation as an industry and anyone who's not doing it, shame on you. <laughs> but uh, we all do have that responsibility together. So it's great to see that Target's walking the walk and talking the talk. Um, so, you know, 2023, what, it looks like it's gonna be a crazy year. There's a lot of predictions that we don't know if they're gonna happen, you know, uh, and uncertainty relative to economic times, but there's also a lot of things to be excited about. So. Tell me, you know, about how you're approaching, you and your team are approaching 2023, and, you know, what are you cautious about and what are you excited about? Yeah, I mean, I um, certainly, and it's, it's here we are just January. Um, Is it only January? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's um, a long January so far, but it certainly feels like staying close to the consumer and the guest and understanding what their needs are. I mean, that's always important, but, it does feel with the uncertainty in the economy, as well as socio-political climate, like oh, there's is no- Is there anything going on? Yeah, <laughs> some wars. <laughs> but staying close to, to the guest, and more important now than ever, given the speed of change, staying close to our teams, because how that's affecting them is, is really, really critical. Um, so that's- You're only as good as your team, right? A hundred percent. I have my team here too. Love you. And your partners would be another one. I mean, I think um, having the opportunity to work, we have national brand partners in addition to the own brands that um, Target develops. So they have a great pulse on what they're seeing. So staying connected, number one thing. I think as I think about what I'm excited about and um, for my Target friends here, this team within food and beverage has amazing momentum. So for 2022 it was a challenging year but they delivered double digit growth on top of double digit growth for 2021. Wow. And so I think that there's Can just- Can I a, touch you? Oh, that's well, great. Touch, <laughs> touch them. That's uh, where that, like all the great. glitter no, no, and no. the- It has to be, it's good luck, okay. That's but that's good. pretty yeah. fun of, you know, as we start a new year, I feel really lucky to be on a team that has momentum and it's certainly not going to be without challenges, but the talent of the people on the team and, the positive um, collaboration and creativity, that certainly, you know, just makes the obstacles feel like they can be surmountable. So That's great. I'm excited about that. We have a great new part of our team overseas that um, has just started to work with us. So I'm excited about building that. And then on the personal side, um, I was telling Janine, I have two younger kids. We really haven't traveled internationally. And you know, moving and then COVID, this is kind of the year that my husband and I said, okay, <laughs> we went to Canada last summer and they, they said, I mean, well, I have Canadian ties. They said, that doesn't really count, mom. That's still like, <laughs> still here. So I'm excited to get a couple, hopefully. So where are you going to go? Well, I, one trip is confirmed for Costa Rica in March, which if Fine. anyone who's been to Minnesota through the winter, <laughs> by the time March comes, you're really ready to see 
like you do here, some green grass and some leaves. So I'm really excited about that. And then maybe we'll see how the Costa Rica trip does. But we've talked, um, we have a couple of, uh, a French student is our eighth grade daughter. So we've talked about going, oh, trying to go to France sometime in the summer. Well, so. I'm happy to come along in your suitcase. Wow. Um, well, that since sounds we, really fun. We know we travel together, but let me ask yes. you the same question. What are you looking forward oh, to God. in 2023? Well, first of all, I, I want all our businesses to grow. Uh, you know, I, I look forward. I'm a perpetual optimist. I think you said that on the, on the stage. <laughs> so I think 2023 is going to be awesome, and I'm trying to manifest that for everybody and all consumers as well. Uh, I think, you know, look. I, I would like to think that the economy isn't going to be as bad as everyone predicts. You know, I, I'm hoping that it's going to be better and we're all going to be surprised. But, you know, I do believe in the same thing you do. Like, I think if you surround yourself with good people, all, all things take care of themselves. And, you know, m my mother always used to say, my dear mother, she used to say, flowers grow out of the dirt. So you, you can't even be, like, negative about when things go wrong because beautiful things will sprout uh, when mm. things are, go bad. So I'm very optimistic about 2023. You know, we should all go to a psychic and, <laughs> and, and, and try to figure out what's going to happen. But I, I think good things are going to happen. But I do think that the consumer is smarter than they were before. And they're smarter because they had to spend two years at home and they learned how to do things differently, and they're gonna be d more demanding on companies and brands to do the right thing, and they, they wanna be met where they wanna be met. So um, I'm excited to solve those problems for those consumers. And um, I know we're gonna close, but you actually took on a new opportunity a month ago. So yeah. speak a little bit about your role Well, I hate cargo. the fact that the interviewee <laughs> is now turning it on the interviewer. So yeah, I was the president of CHER, which is a very important mission for me, all about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the appropriate uh, portrayals of women and girl in media marketing. And I came to Cargo because I wanted to learn about ad tech, but I also came to Cargo because we have incredible technology, incredible technology to help us scale, to help multicultural audiences amplify their content. And so I'm really excited about that and, you know, just learning about the whole crazy ad tech business, you know, um, and just being able to be with all my friends in the business. So I, I'm, I'm really optimistic about 2023. And I have three kids, too, and they, too, want to go on a vacation um, and uh, spend all my money. And uh, so uh, I look forward to going to Target to get ready for that. <laughs> awesome. We'd love to have you. <laughs> yes. If I, well, you know, it's growing every time we, we have a conversation. I mean, literally, if I, I, I have to say, I, I really cannot go through Target without picking up, like, 10 different cute things that I didn't know that I needed. And, you know, they all are displayed proudly in my home. Well, we love that. We definitely want to bring affordable joy oh, yeah. to you oh, and Lots and of joy. And I have lots of Target joy. Year. So... Anyway, um, I don't know where we are on time because I'm not good about time. Are we good? So should we open it up to any questions? You know, and you and feel free to ask us anything, even personal. You know, except for I won't tell you my Speak weight. Speak for yourself. I, I, exactly. I won't. I, I won't tell you my weight, uh, or or you know how old I am. But other than that, all good stuff. Go ahead. I, you know what? I'm, some people like really. I'm just going to do the okay. mic for good measure because no offense to y'all, but I think he's. Hello, hello. I can project, but I'm Dylan. I'm Matt Cargo with Janine and a small crew here. I had a super quick cool question. Uh, big retailer, but also owner of a ton of Targo, Target owned products. Um, are there lessons that you take from the direct consumer movement as it relates to either of those? Things like a philosophy and growth marketing or you know, agility in terms of product placement or things like subscriptions, interesting things like that as a retailer or also as a, you know, owner of a large portfolio of products that you're selling yourself? Well, certainly, and I'm laughing as it, like my target colleagues are in the front um, as well. Certainly, you know, um, we're constantly learning and evolving, whether it's from the brands that we developed, which we re reference as our own brands or the national brands, or to your point, there's a good number of direct-to-consumer brands that selected Target as their first big kind of brick-and-mortar experience. And so, you know, we, we learn with them when they come to Target. 
It's certainly exciting to see all the newness that and innovation that they bring to a category and business. And you know, I know as we um, even last week had an internal meeting where the teams were talking about some of those DTC brands. So we definitely try and learn not only through our own brands, but th through the other brands um, that are sold at Target. Hi, I'm Allie Demshack. I'm from Lactalis US Yogurt. You know my brands, Stonyfield Organic and um, Siggy's Icelandic Style Ski are both sold at Target. Um, <laughs> knowing that shopping habits have changed for the Target guests and consumers um, as a result of the pandemic, what else is on app with Target to capture that second basket? Because I feel like you guys in particular were ahead of the curve on, or the curve, the curve, <laughs> on curbside. Um, same day services or online pickup. Um, in, in other nomenclature. So I was just curious what else is on tap to kind of, because we're seeing this a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Consumers or guests are placing their orders for perhaps grocery items, yogurt, right? And then going into, picking up their order and then going into store and browsing around for everything else. So what are some strategies to kind of grab that second basket? Yeah, it's a great question. And certainly it's been fun to see the insights, not only from those that we have internally, but also from partners like Stonyfield and others um, as well. I mean, certainly we're looking at how do we continuously evolve the guest experience to take advantage of that behavior? Because to your point, you'll place your drive up order for maybe those essentials that you know you need for your week. But we see guests coming in because they just love to shop the aisles of Target. And so, you know, continuing to make sure that we have the right type of store experience that allows them to explore and experience new products is certainly that. And then we're also looking actively at the digital experience because people will be right on their Target app as they shop the aisles. And so we're thinking about how do we continuously evolve the digital experience in, additional, in addition to the store experience to really make sure that um, we are delivering for them and evolving the experience overall. I'll admit, personally, I've got a bit of a love-hate because rarely do I come home from somewhere outside of the house and I don't get a text from my wife that's like, by the way, just real stop in real quick. <laughs> Let me know when you're there. What number are you at? And they'll bring it out to you. But on the flip side, I'm not allowed to go in to pick it up necessarily because then I'll come home and she'll be like, what is that? We didn't need those groceries. I'm like, yeah, but it looked really funny. And then she's like, no, I had a plan. I, I bought what I want. But hey, you won. Way to go. Marketing win. Nate, please, where you're from? Hi, Melissa Tutoris. I'm with Zeta Global now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I just bought them. So I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> um, I spent 23 years in retail, and I would love to hear how the Ulta install is driving traffic. I know when I walk past and I see NARS inside of a Target, it makes me giggle with excitement. Um, I did see a lot of out of stock, so I'm sure the inventory situation is there, but I'd love to hear just some stats on how that's doing to drive your overall brand extension and experience. Well, certainly I would not be the person to be able to have those stats for you. Six months ago, um, I was working more closely with the Alta team on the marketing that we would do together. But certainly we've seen great incrementality there. And um, the brands, right, the ability to offer more premium beauty at Target, which we know resonates with our guests, it, to the earlier question, right, continues to evolve that experience of, I can get even more at Target and really explore different different avenues. I think from the digital experience side, you know, that's where there's been augmentation there of the virtual reality try on with a lot of the products from the Ulta uh, beauty brand. So I think that's also brought another dimension. And then on the loyalty side too, our loyalty teams at Target and Ulta Beauty have worked together because a lot of those um, consumers shop both businesses. So again, how can we help capture more of that share of wallet that they're looking for in premium beauty has been a great benefit to the partnership. I love that because it's like all boats rise with the tide type of philosophy. You know, um, I, I think that that's so smart. And as a beauty consumer, among a lot of other things, um, I, I think that it was a brilliant uh, install. It's been really fun to read the comments of people would say, you know, I can get my coffee at Starbucks. I get to shop the aisles of Target and get Ulta Beauty. It's kind of like 
the trifecta of having all those three together for little retail therapy or self-care moments. Crowd. Awesome. Okay, well, I will say, you know, thank you. And truly, as a fellow Minnesotan, you gotta love the hometown heroes. I'm so glad to see you there, right? I was like, wait, there's a lot of you. Can't wait to meet you all. Um, but honestly, right, we've had a lot of amazing brands and things here today. Um, but truly, I mean, I, I would be remiss to say, growing up in Minnesota, you know, it, it is one of those, to your point, like when you said, like, that's what makes us Target, right? And you like hear about Target going to, to the University of Minnesota, like, they teach you about Target. It is just incredible and a big testament to your whole team of what you've been able to do. And also so fun for me, you know, and, and again, a lot of brands do it well, but to see the consistency in how you show up no matter where. And again, you know, naively when I was growing up, like I just thought Target was our thing, right? And then I, I learned like, it's not, and that's fine. We'll share it with all of you, but it really is impressive to see and a testament. And, and I can't wait to connect because I didn't think there were any other Minnesotans here. So this is amazing. Um, but huge round of applause for these two. Way to go.